Hey all, Heber here. So uh, this is a video I've been wanting to do for a long time. And now that we have individual ships, that's I can finally do it. And uh, it is really a look at uh, agile cruisers. You know, are they as bad as some people say, or is it really a skill issue? So uh, first of all, what is an agile cruiser? So uh, agile cruisers have nothing to do with kiting. Uh, an agile cruiser is a very aggressive cruiser that trades uh, firepower, range and concealment for all out agility and um, consumables. Hence the name agile cruiser. It doesn't really refer to the rudder. It actually refers to um, the usability and the utility of the ship in battle. And uh, as you can see here, this is how you set up an Agile Cruiser. It's really like an Agile Primary Commander plus Agile Inspirations and Double Rudder. So a rough guide on what an Agile Cruiser is, is a rudder shift of uh, 3 seconds or below, a speed of 35 knots or faster, and a consumable of uh, more than 3 or equal to 3. And that means that you will usually have to run a commander that has the legendary perk called uh, Fully Packed, which all the Agile commanders do have. So uh, next up, what constitutes doing well in an Agile Cruiser? And I, I have it on good authority that uh, a win rate of more than 60%, uh, and I quote, is very, very good. So uh, I'll leave it at that, and that's my measure. And uh, since the beginning of this game, I have, uh, you know, aimed at getting my Agile Cruisers to have a win rate of like um, minimum 60%. And uh, that will be a primarily solo win rate, by the way, because uh, that thing goes out the window when you play Divisions. But that's a whole other story. So uh, this video here will focus on solo play. Divisions are not part of this. So uh, how we're going to look at this is simply uh, to look at the individual st ship stats for all Agile Cruisers, or pretty much all Cruisers in the game, and uh, then see what is the win rate, really. And um, it's fairly simple, and like I said before, if you look at the uh, measure we're going for here, then a win rate of more than 60%, uh, we're going to call very, very good. So uh, that's the measure, and uh, that's what we are going for. Now you can definitely reach a higher win rate uh, in cruisers and even with different builds. Obviously, that's not really what the video is about here. Uh, this video is about saying that Agile cruisers are definitely viable and they are definitely competitive. So uh, that begs the question, if you can't make Agile cruisers work for you, is that the Agile cruisers fault or is that more of a skill issue? And uh, that's what we're looking for in this video here. So uh, we're starting out with four ships here. and. Uh, I'm starting out with the ships that do very, very well as Agile Cruisers, and that's the majority of cruisers in the game, by the way. So uh, we start out with a Melfi, which is the win rate of 60, and Atago again, 60. And then it's a funny thing here about Atago B, which has a 5% higher win rate, and uh, I'm pretty sure I have the reason for that, and I'll do a separate video on that. Uh, but for now, just uh, yeah, between 60 and 65 for Atago, right? And that brings us to my much maligned and much hated Agile Alaska. And uh, even the Agile Alaska, which uh, so many people are booing and, you know, making memes about, actually sports a 63% win rate over a few hundred battles here. So uh, not sh too shabby at all for an Agile Alaska, is it? Now, uh, I will say I do have a whopping seven division battles in Alaska, and they actually pull the win rate up by one and a half percent. So, uh, the solo win rate, the agile solo win rate in Alaska is more like 61, 62 percent, and uh, that's just the way it is. So, uh, it's also it also shows you how much just a few tiny division battles uh, actually, you know, improve your win rate. Right, that brings us to the next four. And uh, Des Moines is uh, also primarily an Agile Cruiser, except when I play in Divisions. Um, and I have played about 20-something Division games in Des Moines. And again, the win rate is pulled up about 4% by that. So it's actually uh, around 62, something like that. Uh, still more than uh, good and still making the ship more than capable as an Agile Cruiser. 
So uh, Baya is 75%. Let's like let's just skip over that one. There's no <laughs> contest at all. Cheshire is a difficult ship already. And uh, pop an agile build on this ship and it certainly doesn't become easier. But still, we can uh, you know pull home a 60% win rate in that one as well. Lastly, we have Ochakov, which is obviously a very good agile cruiser. It's not a ship that I, you know, play a lot. Or actually, I do play it quite a bit. I have at least a few hundred battles in it, but I don't sport it on my channel a lot because I don't really like to uh, really like do commercials for it. To be honest, just like Weimar, I keep it to an absolute minimum. I think I have one Ochakov video, and I think I have two Weimar videos out of 1,100 videos on my channel. Alright, next four. And another ship I get a lot of crap for is my Agile Yoshino. But, again, we are pulling home a 60% solo win rate in that thing as well. So, uh, it works very, very well. Next up, we have the Agile Königsberg, and it's at 64%, so it's also, uh, you know, solid, more than solid. It's an excellent Agile Cruiser. And then we have a bit of a surprise here, the Tier 8 Dimitri Donskoy. And um, an 84, now, I think I have less than 100 battles in this thing here. And I do remember when this ship came out, I believe Final Boss and myself were doing a lot of, uh, or at least one day of uh, division, fooling around, figuring out if it worked at an Agile Cruiser. So um, uh, still the win rate solo would be very, very high. And uh, that is an Agile build. Yep, believe it or not. Indianapolis is about 20 battles and it's I almost didn't bring it into this video because uh, I don't think that's enough But I just thought it was funny that it's actually a hundred percent. So uh, agile Indianapolis. Yeah works very well All right next up we have another surprising tier 8 and it is the San Louis and uh, this actually surprised me because uh, I wasn't you know a big fan of this ship, but it actually works really well as an agile cruiser and I'm definitely going to give it more attention now um, it's pretty much the Shah Martel, and uh, when you see Martel later, it suffers a bit for being one of my earlier ships. That I, I one back when I was a real potato, and I, two I was still experimenting with the, the agile playstyle and how to you know get the best results. But uh, obviously, I've learned from that. And Saint Louis, I can start you know from a very high level, and uh, obviously the win rate shows that. Next up is Weimar, and you know, the less said the better, and uh, the next ship is Albemarle at 61%. Uh, also uh, well within the very, very good um, range, and uh, really nothing to complain about there at all. And again, we have a surprising tier 8 here at Rune, which I have actually been playing quite a bit lately, and I uh, have almost a 70% win rate in that ship, and um, I'm a bit surprised about that. I'll look further into that. In any case, that is also primarily, or at least 90%, an Agile rune. So, uh, yep, Agile again, works perfectly. Next up, and again in no particular order or tier, we have the Minotaur at 64%, my favorite ship in the game, and also doing really well in it. Next up, Tiger 59, also primarily an Agile Tiger 59 at 61%, also well within the very, very good area. Huang He at 65%, um, also a really fun ship, which I haven't been playing a lot lately, but uh, yeah, I like it, and with an agile build, it's definitely competitive. Plymouth as well, uh, I think I have less than 100 battles on Plymouth, and uh, still pull home 61% win rate with a primarily agile build. Next up, we have a ship with great potential, it's the Algerie W, and uh, this ship uh, I need to spend more time with, but as you can see, it's already uh, up there. It's already at 60%, and I believe I have about uh, probably a few hundred battles in it, and uh, I definitely want to uh, do more research on it, so to speak. Next up, we have my only tier 3 in here, I believe. It's the Danai, or Danai, whatever you say. And uh, again, an agile Danai at nearly 70% win rate. Pretty good. Belfast 43, 62, and uh, once you'll see the uh, tier 6 Belfast, you'll see the difference in these two cruisers here because 43 has torpedoes, makes a big difference. Again, 62% as an Agile Belfast 43. And lastly, we have the Susuya. And uh, I'm surprised here because uh, 
I don't think Susuya is very suited for an agile build, but we still pull home 60% win rate again. Alright, next up we have the new Wichita at 67%. And uh, well, nothing really surprising there. Wichita is a really strong ship, regardless of the build you put on it. Rochester is performing much better than Baltimore, which you'll see later, because it has smoke and uh, that makes it uh, able to pull above 60% with an agile build. Emil Bertang, man, like, of course it's gonna do well with an agile build, it's like a super agile ship. Exeter, also uh, one of my favorite agile cruisers, also doing really well at 65%. Next up, we have the Edinburgh, and that is my favorite ship right uh, behind the Minotaur. The old Wichita, the Wichita CE at 63%, also uh, no, no surprise there at all. Agile Budiani, uh, 65%, also no real surprise there. Except that this and uh, Donskoy are the only Agile cruisers in the Russian lineup, at least so far. The others just don't work, but you'll see that later as well. Tier 4, we have the Yahagi, uh, an Agile Yahagi at that 72% uh, win rate, and uh, yeah pretty good as well. So uh, that brings us to the last of the green ships and it is my Agile Graf Spee. Also a ship I've caught some flack <laughs> about, but uh, I don't care. I have a 62% win rate in this thing here and it does really well with an Agile build. So uh, well, surprising, but uh, that's a fact. So uh, these were the green ships, so now we're moving on to the yellow ships, which are the ones that may or may not work with an agile build or there's some other reason for their performance. The first of them is actually quite a surprise, not, not the least to me, and uh, it's the Colbert. Uh, with an agile build I don't think it performs as well as it should and I think it has a lot to do with the fact that I played this ship uh, as a CC mostly in the two weeks where no one else had access to the ship and I tell you what it got focused a lot. So I'm kind of writing that off for that reason. That brings us to Hipper, and uh, this ship suffers a bit, uh, you know, first of all for being an old ship, so I've been potatoing around in it a lot. And um, it's also one of those ships where I experimented a lot on, especially in the beginning, I used lots of weird builds, and um, I eventually settled on an agile build a few hundred battles into this ship's life. So uh, I don't think that this win rate here is fair. And I can tell you in the last 300 battles, my win rate on Hippo has been 63%. Belfast is no surprise. Uh, it's not a very good agile cruiser. It doesn't have torpedoes and uh, it's not exactly agile. It feels like it's always stuck in glue and uh, you just can't have that when agility is you know, your main thing. And uh, Compared to Belfast 43 that has torpedoes and the win rate goes up by, a, I believe, 8%. I believe that was 62%. So uh, that's the different torpedoes make. And uh, 43 is even at a tier higher than uh, the original Belfast. And then uh, next is Montpellier, which is, you know, pretty much a Cleveland. And uh, that's a really bad agile cruiser. So uh, next up we have the Prince Eugen and its situation is very similar to Hipper and uh, also uh, the most recent win rate in Eugen is more than 60%, so at some point we'll get uh, up to uh, 60 plus in the ship as well. Martel, same situation as Eugen, uh, it is below 60, but in reality it's well above. Cleveland, that's just a really bad agile cruiser, so uh, that's the reason it's not performing, they're much better built. Mines is a bit of a weird case, it's too squishy compared to Hibber to be played the same way and uh, I, you know, insist playing it that way and that does, doesn't work out. So not a very good agile cruiser. So uh, the last in the yellow group here is the ship that everybody picks for some reason when they want to, you know, go out and play an agile cruiser game. And Mogami is one of the absolute worst agile cruisers in the game. I am surprised the win rate is 56% because, wow, this thing is made of paper and it just does not have uh, the ability that, for example, a Targo has to uh, pull off Agile stunts. This is a terrible Agile cruiser and uh, I would never put an Agile build on this thing. So uh, now you know. 
So uh, lastly, that brings us to the four absolute worst Agile cruisers in the game. And uh, Chapayev taking the cake, and uh, same as Kutuzov, I just apparently sold that ship, so I can't show it to you. Uh, now, I only have three battles in Chapayev, so it's not uh, even close to statistically accurate, but uh, wow, this is a terrible Agile cruiser. There's nothing Agile about it. Baltimore is also, uh, well, it's trash with an Agile build, it really is. It's a very good cruiser, but with an Agile build, nah, don't even try doing it. Same thing goes for Talon. Um, Budioni before it is an excellent pick, um, and Talon is an awful pick, and uh, Riga is also an absolutely awful pick. But then Dimitri Donskoy, very good. Go figure. Atlanta, also a really, really bad Agile cruiser. So uh, most light American cruisers, they don't work well as Agile cruisers. So uh, what's the conclusion here? Well, it's pretty simple. If you can't make Agile cruisers work, or you're still under the belief that Agile cruisers are trash, well, it's not really uh, the Agile cruisers fault, it's your fault. Uh, it is a skill issue. So uh, with that reprimand, I'll leave you here and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you out there.